Intel's path in recent years has been fluctuating. After each release of a new architecture, they use it for several years. Skylake was an excellent architecture, but Intel continued to use it until the 10th generation. Additionally, Alder Lake was good, but was it necessary to reintroduce it in the 13th generation? And now they are reusing it in the 14th generation. Because, literally speaking, the 14th generation is the same as the 13th generation, but with a new name. Today we will talk about the 14th generation of Intel, specifically the i7-14700K. As I mentioned earlier, the 14th generation is the same as the 13th generation. The same architecture, the same socket, the same manufacturing process, the same technologies, and the same platform. And speaking of motherboards, Intel has released new boards under the name Z790, which come with some improvements, such as support for Wi-Fi 7, Thunderbolt 4, and in the future, Thunderbolt 5. They also support higher DDR5 speeds and new features like automatic processor overclocking using artificial intelligence. Here is the list of the new processors, and literally, there are no significant changes from the 13th generation. The only different processor is the i7-14700K, which will feature four additional high-efficiency cores. So, we will begin the review of the 14th generation with this processor. In today's experiments, I will be using the ROG Strix Z 790E Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, which is a mid-range board that supports Wi-Fi 7 with a new antenna for improved Wi-Fi reception. The rest of the components used in the experiments are visible in front of you. After some tests, these are the results. Assassin's Creed Valhalla performed equally on both processors, and the 13th generation had a slight average frame rate advantage of 1%. Borderlands 3 also showed identical performance on both processors, with the 13th generation having a slight 1% average frame rate advantage. Counter-Strike 2 required more than CSGO, but it provided a more stable frame rate. Once again, the difference between the 13th and 14th generations was only 2%, and in my opinion, both offered an excellent gaming experience. Cyberpunk 2077 also exhibited similar performance, but the i7-14700K was slightly better. Far Cry 6 favored the 13900K processor, but the difference is almost negligible. Forza Horizon 5 showed an i7 advantage by just two frames, which is within the margin of error. Hogwarts Legacy is one of the worst games in terms of utilizing hardware, and this is the first game that shows a clear advantage for the i9-13900K with a 5% difference. Horizon Zero Dawn performs similarly on both processors. The Last of Us showed similar frame rates, with a 1% advantage for the i7. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Spider-Man with ray tracing is one of the most demanding games on the processor. Here, we can see that the 13900K is about 4% better. Starfield is extremely processor intensive, and it also had poor optimization. Here, we notice the largest difference between the processors, with the 13th generation being 10% better, even surpassing the Ryzen 9 by a significant margin. Warzone 2 utilizes processors excellently, and although the average frame rates were close on both processors, the i9 provided a smoother and better gaming experience. The Witcher 3 Next Gen is demanding on processors, especially with DirectX 12. Both processors delivered similar performance, with a slight 2% advantage for the i9. These were some of the gaming tests. In conclusion, these results were quite expected. The same performance, the same heat, and a slight increase in speed all for the same price. Is the new generation impressive? No. Is it bad? Also no. It's slightly better than the i7 13th generation, which might be a bit disappointing, but it can be a good alternative to the 13th generation at the same price. This is all we have, and the final judgment is up to you based on today's tests.